What's up guys, and welcome back to another episode of the Mechanic Series. Today, we're gonna be breaking down what I think is the last episode of the series with double touches. In this video, I'm gonna be going through the step-by-step -step from start to finish of how to execute a successful double tap in Rocket League. So if that sounds interesting, definitely stay tuned. Also, if you're watching this when the video drops, that means you're gonna be first in line for early access of season three of my private coaching program. But I'll be talking more about that at the end of the video. Anyways, let's talk about how to double touch in Rocket League. All right, guys, when it comes to double touches, I think there are three main steps to cover. We have the setup, the first touch, and then finally, the read. When it comes to the wall double touch, there are two ways to start with the setup. In my opinion, the easier of the two is starting it from your half of the field, because you're gonna have more time to chase down the ball and adjust your card. For those of you who don't know, you only have a flip saved for 1.5 seconds after you jump off a surface in Rocket League. So when we're setting up the double touch, the goal should be to hit the ball pretty flat. You don't want to pop it up too high, maybe a 30 degree angle. If you do that, you'll be able to jump, fly after the ball and still catch up to it in time with your flip. That's the setup from your half the field. The other way to set up the double touch is if you're starting closer to the net. In this case, you wanna make contact with the ball at about a 60 degree angle. And because you're starting from closer to the opponent's net, in this case, we are not going to flip. From my experience, I found that you can hit double taps more consistently without flipping if you start closer to the opponent's net. Reason being, if you flip, sometimes you just won't have enough time to recover your car and get back in line with the ball. But that's really the only difference and you're gonna find with more experience when you can use your flip and when you need to save it. Step two, let's go back to the situation where we're starting from near the center mark on our side of the field and we just chipped it up. Now, moving on to what I like to call the first touch of the double touch is really just the moment when we flip through it. And the key with the double touch is getting this first flip right. There are a couple ways you can flip into the ball. But what I found recently is that the most consistent way and the most accurate way is actually to speed flip through your first touch. If you're at that level mechanically, the speed flip is gonna be your best bet when going for double touches that have a flip because the speed flip keeps your nose facing the same direction the entire time. If you can't speed flip though, no worries. You can also just do a simple front flip or a simple diagonal flip. Just know you're gonna usually be a little farther behind the ball if you do it this way. From there, your goal should just be to hit the ball above the near post rather than the far post because it's gonna be the easiest to track and you're gonna have the widest angle to score if you hit it near post. In other words, if you're starting on the left side, you wanna hit it just a little bit above and to the left of the net. And if you're starting on the right side, same thing, just a little bit above and to the right of the net. If you do this perfectly, you actually don't need any aerial card control and you can just boost straight through the ball into your double tap. As you can imagine though, the further to the far post that you hit this ball, the harder it's gonna be to get the double tap because you're gonna have to invest extra boost to chase it down. Your angle is gonna be smaller and you're gonna have to fight the momentum of the ball on the double tap. In summary, all you wanna do with this touch is boost under the ball, aim to hit a laser above the near post and boost through your touch. That's step two. Finally, step three of the double touch, we have the read. Now, reads in Rocket League are one of the hardest parts of the game. That being said, there are a few useful tips I can give you for reads. And the first one is gonna be to remember that the ball always loses a little bit of speed on the bounce. Basically what this means is if the ball is already falling, when it bounces, expect it to bounce a little bit down. 
Now, of course, this is going to be very dependent on the speed of the ball, but always remember the ball is going to lose a little speed when it hits the wall. Now for 80 to 90% of your reads, it's going to be that simple. Just expect the ball to fall a little bit and position your car accordingly. In some cases though, the ball is going to connect with what I like to call the waterfall. And this is the part of the field where if the ball hits it, it's going to drop straight down. Now you can actually use this in certain situations and I use it a lot in threes, but for double taps, the waterfall is usually our worst enemy. Another bounce that I find messes me up more than it should is the top half of the net going post down. So if you see the ball going at the net and it's not gonna clearly hit the backboard, position your car down once again and try to prepare for the ball coming down a little bit. The only step from there is to put your car where you want it. And I know that sounds simple, but this is actually one of the hardest parts of the double tap. And it sucks for me to say this, but it's gonna come a lot with experience. If you're looking for more on specific air roll adjustments, I highly, highly recommend you check out my air roll videos. But one quick tip that I can give you here is turning off ball cam in specific situations. Basically what I found, if you're flying in a pretty straight on angle, turning off ball cam can actually be a great way to see your car better and to focus your attention on your car's positioning. So what I like to do lately with most of my double taps is after I make that first touch, in that first half second, I'm trying to predict where the ball is gonna bounce. Then I instantly air roll adjust my car in that direction, start boosting where I wanna go and turn off ball cam. This is gonna focus my vision on my car and allow me to do any last minute air roll adjustments to knock the ball down into the net. But start to finish, that's basically my thought process and what I use to try to hit double taps consistently. So with all that said, let's talk how to train. Now, training double taps is definitely a little tricky, and it's one of the very few mechanics that I think it's okay to use training packs. If you ever want to aerial the double tap or practice anything like that, you're gonna need a setup. And that's where training packs can come in really, really useful. My favorite double tap training pack of all time is going to be Double Jump by Whey Protein. Since double taps are so situational, I really do believe this is the best training pack to train all the different situations you might see in game. There are some really good ground to double taps, self setup double taps, wall double taps, and a ton of other unique shots in this pack that I highly recommend you check out. Of course, every double tap is going to look different, but one huge tip that you're going to want to keep in mind when you're practicing these shots that aren't coming off the wall is you got to make sure you hold down air roll on the first touch. Unlike when you're coming off the wall, if you're ever coming from under the ball or from the side, you're going to have to fight the ball's momentum. And what this can cause is a little bit of kickback or recoil on that first touch. If you hold air roll, literally just neutral air roll or air roll left or air roll right, you're going to reduce a really big portion of that recoil and be able to fly straight through the ball. Keep in mind that I am always air rolling and boosting through my hits to reduce recoil. That is going to be absolutely huge in helping you hit double taps more consistently. All right, guys, I don't know how I did it, but somehow we're at the 10 or 11 minute mark here. I'm not sure what it'll be once Alex cuts it down, but somehow I managed to take a tutorial that I thought would be five minutes and turn it into a 10 minute one again. <laughs> I hope I didn't ramble on too much and that it was still helpful to you guys. At this point, I've covered all the main mechanics on YouTube, but if you're interested in getting some in-depth explanations about some of the lesser known mechanics, things like, you know, catches, high level flicks, how to soft touch, you know, weird things like that that are becoming more and more meta, definitely check out my private coaching program because I've been putting a ton of work in behind the scenes to rebuild the mechanics accelerator inside the program. If you haven't heard about it yet, I run a live six week private coaching program that launches every month or so. And if you're watching this right now, we are currently accepting applications for season three of the program. So if you're interested, I'll put a link on screen right now to the program's trailer, and you can head over and watch that video to get more info if you want.
Other than that though guys, I am out of mechanics to talk about. I don't know what I'm gonna do. If you have any video ideas, definitely join the Discord. Give me a shout, let me know in the video ideas channel or leave a comment because I'd love to hear what content you guys like to see over the summer. But for real, I'm gonna head out now. So thank you all so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next video. Later guys. I was